This week we've seen a significant increase in COVID-19 cases across Indiana. Look what happened yesterday. 747 people were diagnosed. In fact, we have never seen four consecutive days with numbers this high. Now, if you're still wondering if we're really trending higher, pay attention to this dotted line. This is the seven day rolling average here in Indiana. You can see that this seven day average has the steep incline and that is a big concern for health experts. So today we crunch the numbers and it turns out we are averaging 700 new positive cases every day over the last four days, 700 a day. Here's another way you can look at it. It is one new case every two minutes. Every two minutes, there's another Hoosier diagnosed with COVID-19. Let that sink in and take a look at this. We went all the way back to the early days of COVID-19 here in Indiana. Remember the peak that we had in late April and early May? This top column happened back on April 26th. This was during the outbreak of that Tyson plant in Cass County. I want you to compare where we were there in late April to where we are tonight. When you compare that, the average per day is only off by a handful of cases. Now we may see the numbers dip a bit early next week with the typical lag in reporting over a weekend, but we're gonna be watching these numbers closely to see if this increase continues. All right, let's catch you up on the COVID-19 plans announced today from schools and colleges across our state. IU is not requiring every student to get tested for COVID-19 before arriving at the Bloomington campus this fall. But students living in campus residences or Greek houses will have to get a test within 10 days of arrival. Purdue, on the other hand, is requiring tests for all of the students. They're offering at-home screenings with the help of a telehealth advisor. Hamilton Southeastern announced today it'll start the school year virtually lasting through at least Labor Day. And Franklin Community Schools in Johnson County is delaying the start of their school year by nearly two weeks. The kids won't go back until August 17th. Every year the state high school band championships are held here at Lucas Oil Stadium. But not this year. They've been called off because of the threat of the COVID-19 pandemic. Some high schools have already started practicing for their big moments, their big performances. But the Indiana State School Music Association called off all competitive performances. They didn't want to put lives at risk with some 70,000 kids performing plus thousands of volunteers helping them out. The news hit many of the students hard. They've been practicing for years for their big moments, their big competitions. We're told some of them when they got the news cried. And you can find details on all of these stories tonight. Just go to WTHR.com slash coronavirus. A school in northern Indiana is dealing with a COVID-19 outbreak right now. The volleyball program at Mishawaka High School is now suspended after one of the players tested positive. Other students who were exposed are tonight in quarantine for the next two weeks. And the high school football coach there also tested positive this week. The school tells us he did not have any contact with players, so practices are continuing as planned. So is the government putting microchips in syringes for the COVID-19 vaccine? That's the new social media rumor making the rounds tonight. Our verified team is digging into this $140 million government contract at the center of it all. There are two articles that we're focusing on. This one in naturalnews.com and this one in breakingisraelnews.com. Both talk about a government contract to buy syringes with RFID tracking for COVID vaccinations. Now these articles led to social media posts claiming the COVID vaccine will contain a chip to track you. So let's verify. Will vaccine syringes inject you with an RFID chip? Our sources, the Department of Health and Human Services, Department of Defense, and Apiject Systems America, a syringe manufacturer. So there is one nugget of truth in these claims. The DOD and DHHS did enter a $138 million contract with companies to order syringes, quote, for combating COVID-19 when a safe and proven vaccine becomes available. But that's where the truth ends. The claims say these syringes contain microchips and they point to the manufacturer's websites as proof. Only problem? The manufacturers don't say that. The product page for these syringes talks about RFID tags under the label of the syringes. Put another way, the trackers are on the outside of these syringes. They aren't injected with the vaccine or even in contact with the actual vaccine. Meaning any claims that these government vaccines will inject trackers are false. 
If you've got other claims like these for us to look into, send us an email. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett.